In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Peace My brothers and sisters in Christ, we gather in our cathedral church this morning in great joy for the blessing God gives us this day. Through the power of God the Holy Spirit, the lives of our three brothers will be configured to the very life and mystery of Jesus, our great high priest. Today we give thanks for God's call in all of our lives 
and in a particular way for the courage of our three brothers to say yes to the Father's will. Let us now, my brothers and sisters, acknowledge our own sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord 
Lord our God, who in governing your people make use of the ministry of priests, grant a persevering obedience to your will to these deacons of your church, whom you graciously choose today for the office of the priesthood, so that by their ministry and life they may gain glory for you in Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me thus. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. Ah, Lord God, I said, I know not how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord answered me, Say not, I am too young. To whomever I send you, you shall go. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. Have no fear before them, because I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord extended his hand and touched my mouth, saying, See, I place my words in your mouth. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal patiently with the ignorant and erring, for he himself is beset by weakness. And so for this reason must make sin offerings for himself as well as for other people. No one takes this honor upon himself 
but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, it was not Christ who glorified himself in becoming high priest, but rather the one who said to him, you are my son, this day I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days when he was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, declared by God high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them. He said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, Do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, 
Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. The Gospel of the Lord. Let those to be ordained priests come forward. Joshua Robert Cavender. Present. Kevin Joseph Coyle. Present. Michael George Metzger. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these, our brothers, to the re responsibility of the priesthood. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of the priesthood. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. My warmest welcome to each one gathered here this morning from near and from far, parents, family members, friends of our deacons Joshua, Kevin, and Michael, parishioners from their home parishes and those parishes where they have served during their preparation for the priesthood. Welcome to all who have supported our ordinandi by your prayers and your good works. Welcome to all the lay faithful, our deacons and their wives, our seminarians who are serving and assisting at today's solemn liturgy. Finally, to my brother priests, welcome and thank you for your presence. Today, you and I will embrace with fraternal affection and with great joy these newest members of our presbyterate. May this liturgy of ordination renew in each of us the grace of our own vocations, the commitments that we have made to God and to others. Let this celebration of ordination and the Eucharist enrich each of us, in each of us, a new growth in zeal, dedication, and joy. What does it mean when we say that the ordination of priests is a sacrament? Fundamentally, I think it means this that although the church looks for certain gifts and particular abilities in those to be ordained, ordination is not about one's own gifts and powers. Although they will certainly perform particular functions as priests, ordination is not about the appointment of men as functionaries. 
because they are especially good at performing those functions. Ordination is not about taking on a job to which they will willingly give themselves for the foreseeable future. Because ordination is a sacrament, it means that today you, Joshua, Kevin, and Michael will give what you by yourselves could never give. Because ordination is a sacrament, it means that you begin today to devote the whole of yourselves to something that is not your own work. Today you take on a mission and you become the bearers of a message and a power that God alone can commit to your charge. Because ordination is a sacrament, it is impossible for anyone to declare himself a priest, or even for the community by itself to declare someone a priest by its own fiat. Today you receive from God what is properly God's, but what God has willed to share with us. Today you enter upon a new way of being that makes you the messengers and instruments of God himself. Referring to the high priesthood of Christ in today's second reading, the author of the letter to the Hebrews tells us no one takes this honor upon himself, but only when called by God. Our three brothers who are to be ordained this morning do not claim this special honor for themselves, but can only accept it and be grateful for what God, through the church, is doing for them and for all of us. The gospel passage just proclaimed bears this out. This scene between Jesus and Peter is one of the most spectacular conversations in the New Testament. What is so remarkable is that Peter, who is clearly flawed and who had failed his Lord so dramatically, is given a profound responsibility in the very context of forgiveness and reconciliation. When Peter makes his threefold profession of love, the risen Lord does not say, well now, Peter, everything's okay between us, or there, there, Peter, that's all right. But rather, when Peter makes his threefold profession of love, Jesus said, well then, if you love me, feed my lambs. Look after my sheep, feed my sheep. As he always does, Jesus goes right to where the pain is within Peter and asks the question that goes right to the very heart of it all. Do you love me? And because Peter could answer, yes, Lord, you know that I love you, Jesus, the good shepherd, gives Peter the task of sharing in his own work of leading and feeding the lambs and the sheep. I suspect that Peter knew that the work would be costly because Jesus' own work was utterly costly. It would mean following Jesus into suffering, and Peter ultimately would complete his task of shepherding by laying down his life for the sheep. This is what it meant for Peter. And in a similar way, it is what it must mean for all of us. If we're going to do any single solitary thing for Jesus, it must flow, it must be built on our love for Christ. Even though we have all let him down in various ways in the past, even though we have all sinned, he goes to the very heart of it all and asks us, do you love me? When we can say our yes, as our three brothers do today, he heals the hurts, he forgives the failures, and he entrusts a share of his work to us. While this is true for all the baptized, 
it is especially true for us who become another Christ through sacred ordination. Last month, Pope Francis ordained 10 men to the priesthood at St. Peter's Basilica. In his homily, he reflected on how the priest has been entrusted with Christ's own work and on the manner in which that work is to be carried out. To the 10 who were about to be ordained, our Holy Father said this, when you baptize, you will bring new men and women into the people of God. In the sacrament of penance, you will forgive sins in the name of Christ and the church. Please, in the name of Christ and the church, always be merciful. With holy, you will relieve and console the sick. One of the tasks, perhaps the most tedious, even the most painful one, is to visit the sick. Yes, it is good that the lay faithful and the deacons go, but do not neglect yourselves to of the suffering Christ sick. This sanctifies you. It brings you closer to Christ. You will celebrate the liturgy and offer thanks and praise to God throughout the day, praying not only for the people of God, but for the whole world. Do your part in the work of Christ the priest with genuine joy and love. Be joyful with the joy of Christ's service, even amid suffering, misunderstandings, and your own sins. Keep your gaze ever fixed on the example of the Good Shepherd, who did not come to be served, but to serve. My brothers, this is the precious gift and this is the great challenge that will be placed in your anointed hands this day. Never forget that you are ordained into an order of shepherds. Your brother priests strive to form and live as a caring community as Christ has commanded. May you always find support, strength, and joy in your brother priests. As you celebrate the sacred mysteries for your sisters and brothers, continue to hear the voice of the Lord that you hear clearly today, and keep always before your eyes what you have before your eyes today. May the Good Shepherd, who never leaves his flock untended, sustain you throughout a long, happy, and fruitful life as his priests. Dear sons, before you enter the order of the priesthood, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Do you resolve, with the help of the Holy Spirit, to discharge without fail the office of priesthood in the presbyteral rank as worthy fellow workers with the order of bishops in caring for the Lord's flock? Do you resolve to exercise the ministry of the word worthily and wisely preaching the gospel and teaching the Catholic faith? Do you resolve to celebrate faithfully and reverently, in accord with the Church's tradition, the mysteries of Christ, especially the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation for the glory of God and the sanctification of the Christian people? Do you resolve to implore with us God's mercy upon the people entrusted to your care by observing the command to pray without ceasing? Do you resolve to be united more closely every day to Christ the High Priest, who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice and with him to consecrate yourselves to God for the salvation of all. Do 
do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will pour out abundantly the gifts of heaven on these his servants, whom he has chosen for the office of priest. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul, pray for us. Saint Andrew, pray for us. Saint John, Augustine, pray for us. Saint Athanasius, pray for us. Saint Basil, pray for us. Saint Martin, pray for us. Saint Benedict, pray for us. Saint Francis and Saint Dominic, pray. John Vianney, pray for us. Saint Patrick, pray for us. Saint John Newman, pray for us. Saint Catherine of Siena, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Jesus, pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From all evil, Lord, deliver us, we pray. From every sin, Lord, deliver us, we pray. From everlasting death, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your incarnation, 
salvation. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners. Lord, we ask you to hear our Govern and protect your holy church. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the ordained in faithful service to your church. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Bless these chosen men. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify these chosen men. Lord, we Bless, sanctify, and consecrate these chosen men. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and the afflicted. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Hear us, we beseech you, Lord our God, and pour out on these servants of yours the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the power of priestly grace, that those whom in the sight of your mercy we offer to be consecrated may be surrounded by your rich and unfailing gifts through Christ our Lord.
I'm going to extend my hands out over them because that's what they do. Draw near, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, author of human dignity. It is you who apportion all graces. Through you, everything progresses. Through you, all things are made to stand firm. To form a priestly people, you appoint ministers of Christ, your Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit, arranging them in different orders. Already in the earlier covenant, offices arose established through mystical rites when you set Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them. You chose men next in rank to accompany them and assist them in their task. So too in the desert, 
you implanted the spirit of Moses in the hearts of 70 wise men, and with their help he ruled your people with greater ease. So also upon the sons of Aaron you poured an abundant share of their father's plenty, that the number of the priests prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle, which were a shadow of the good things to come. But in these last days, Holy Father, you sent your Son into the world, Jesus, who is apostle and high priest of our confession. Through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself to you as a spotless victim, and he made his apostles consecrated in the truth sharers in his mission. You provided them also with companions to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation throughout the whole world. And now we beseech you, Lord, in our weakness to grant us these helpers that we need to exercise the priesthood that comes from the apostles. Grant, we pray, Almighty Father, to these your servants the dignity of the priesthood. Renew deep within them the spirit of holiness. May they henceforth possess this office, which comes from you, O God, and is next in rank to the office of bishop. And by the example of their manner of life, may they instill right conduct. May they be worthy co-workers with our order, so that by their preaching and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may bear fruit in human hearts and reach even to the ends of the earth. Together with us, may they be faithful stewards of your mysteries, so that your people may be renewed in the waters of rebirth and nourished from your altar, so that sinners may be reconciled and the sick raised up. May they be joined with us, Lord, in imploring your mercy for the people entrusted to their care and for all the world. And so, may the full number of the nations gathered together in Christ be transformed into your one people and made perfect in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Christ the Lord, a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek, offered bread and wine, alleluia. to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your foes your footstool.
the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. The Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. The Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross.
to you. And God bless you. Congratulations. Thank you.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. God, who free should make the all answer you, grant by the power of this sacrifice, we pray, that the labors of your servants may constantly please you, and in your church bear that fruit which lasts forever through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and Eternal God, for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that his own priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters. They strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and to offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts 
these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your service. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, the mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for these your servants, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of priesthood. And in your mercy, keep safe your gifts in them, so that what they have received by divine commission, they may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. 
be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. also your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Again, peace be with you. Peace with you, Kevin. Christ, peace with you, John. Peace of Christ, Tim. So thanks so much for being here. Fine. Peace be with you. Pat, peace of the Lord be with you. Peace be with you, John. Peace be with you, John.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. May the divine sacrifice we have offered and received, O Lord, give new life to your priests and to all your servants, that united to you in unfailing love, they may receive the grace of giving worthy service to your majesty through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the uh, final blessing uh, and dismissal, uh, there are a number of acknowledgments that I'd like to make uh, and express our gratitude and, and our profound appreciation. First of all, the, the selection of the seminary that we send our seminarians to is a very important and a very serious one. You know, being the Bishop of Harrisburg is like being a parent with 30 plus kids in college at the same time. <laughs> and it's a good thing, but it has its challenges. And I'm, I'm very, we're very blessed to be able to have our seminarians formed toward the priesthood both in St. Charles Seminary in Philadelphia and at Mount St. Mary's Seminary in Emmitsburg. We have long-standing connections to both of those, and I'm delighted for the experience and the formation that our men receive on their journey toward ordination to the priesthood. And I'm very honored and I'm very happy to welcome the representatives of those two seminaries who are here this morning. Bishop Timothy Sr., who is Auxiliary Bishop of Philadelphia and the rector of St. Charles Barmeo Seminary is here representing the seminary along with Father Patrick Walsh, who will be there until the 19th of June when he's being transferred to become a, a pastor in the archdiocese. But thank you both, Bishop Senior, Father Walsh, thank you for being here this morning to uh, share in the joy of, uh, you've, you've guided these men along over the years and today you share in the joy of their ordination. And also Father Charles Connor from Mount St. Mary's Seminary. Father's on the teaching faculty, assistant professor of church history. Father Connor, thank you for being here and representing Mount St. Mary's, and uh, very grateful for the honor of, of your presence. I'd like to recognize and have us all express our appreciation for the parents of our newly ordained priests. Um, Great. That was, that was wonderful to have that spontaneous applause. Let me just ask to stand at Robert and Jane Cavender, <laughs> Father Joshua's parents, thank you so, so very much. Um, they're from, of course, uh, St. Peter's in Elizabethtown. That's uh, Father Cavender's home parish. Um, and uh, thank you for the gift of your son to the, to the church. Uh, to Joseph and Elizabeth Coyle, Father Kevin Coyle's parents, thank you. From St. Patrick's in Carlisle, thank you for the gift of your son. And Richard and Darlene Metzger, also from St. Patrick's in Carlisle, thank you for the gift of your son. I want to say St. Patrick's in Carlisle leads the way in vocations for us. Two of our three new priests are from St. Patrick's in Carlisle. <laughs> so it wasn't hard to figure out who's not going to St. Patrick's in Carlisle. Uh, but, uh, but thank you. And, and we have, is it uh, Father Forey? Do we have two seminary? Oh, where do you, where does Father Forey go? Oh, how many seminaries? Do I have two in now? Two more? One in and one to be interviewed this week from St. Patrick's and Carlisle. So whatever is happening there, keep it up. It's a wonderful, wonderful. I certainly want to thank our diocesan scola under the direction of Dr. Richard Skirpin and uh, Mrs. Diane Skirpin, uh, who sang the psalm, the psalmist this morning, and uh, Mr. Robert Barbarino, organist, and all the instrumentalists and our scholar. Thank you all for leading us so beautifully in our sung prayer this morning. I mentioned in my homily the uh, permanent deacons of our diocese and their wives, uh, also the uh, women and men religious who are here this morning for this celebration, as well as our diocesan seminarians who were serving and assisting 
for the liturgy. My brother priests, thank you for being here on this most happy day in the life of our diocese. Um, I'd like to mention uh, just two weeks ago, uh, we uh, welcomed four new transitional deacons to uh, the diocese, uh, Deacon Benjamin Dunkelberger, Deacon Richard Lyons, Deacon Ken Roth, and uh, Deacon Timothy Saad. Uh, and we extend again our congratulations to them. I'm sure they're counting to the, the first Saturday in June of next year when they'll be there on the floor and we'll be laying hands, please God, on them to join the priesthood, as well as uh, Stephen Loeb, who will be ordained to the transitional diaconate in September. He's studying at the North American College, and so God willing, we'll be able to have five priests ordained for service to our diocese next year. To the Sarah Club, who served as um, uh, ministers of hospitality this morning, to my brother, uh, fourth degree Knights of Columbus, and the the uh, color guard, uh, th color corps, thank you so much for adding to the solemnity today. And to everyone who came, in the various ways in which we're connected to the newly ordained, thank you for the prayers and the support that you've given to our new priest. And please continue, as we're always exhorted at the Chrism Mass, to always pray for the priests and the bishop in your daily conversation uh, with God. Uh, I met with our now newly ordained uh, and uh, explained to them what I'm asking them to do for their first assignment, which is so important in the life of every priest. Uh, and so let me announce that it's Father Josh Cavender who will be going to St. Patrick's in Carlisle. <laughs> Father Kevin Coyle will be going to St. Catherine Labore Parish here in Harrisburg. And Father Michael Metzger to Holy Name of Jesus Parish here in Harrisburg. Finally, let me just thank our Office of Worship for the Diocese and in a very special way, Father Josh Brahmer and the staff here at our cathedral for all of the preparations that are necessary uh, for a beautiful liturgy such as we've experienced today. So, Father Brahmer and to all your staff, thank you so very, very much. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down to the May God, who founded the church and guides her still, protect you constantly with his grace that you may faithfully discharge the duties of the priesthood. Amen. May he make you servants and witnesses in the world to divine charity and truth and faithful ministers of reconciliation. And may, he who, and may he make you true shepherds to provide the living bread and the word of life to the faithful, that they may continue to grow in the unity of the body of Christ. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, and may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.